Hello, welcome to this presentation of the OpenStack Cluster Installer, aka OCI. Who am I? I am Thomas. I've been packaging OpenStack since 2011, which is more or less when the project started. I work in Informaniac, which is the Swiss Netherlands' biggest hosting provider, and I'm also a contributor to OpenStack Upstream. How it all started? I first started to investigate solutions to install bare metal, like Mass, Forman, Cobbler, Ironic, and I decided it wasn't adapted to what I needed. So I started my own project. OCI uses this technology, a DHCP server, Apache, a PHP MySQL, a TFTP server, and Puppet. OCI is made of 50% PHP, 25% shell script, and 25% Puppet manifests. Everything is in Debian. When I say everything, I really mean it. This includes Puppet Manifest as well. The way the bare metal installer works is that your servers will be booted over PXE under a Debian Live system. In it, hardware discovery will start and send all the information to the PHP MySQL. Then a Debian scripted installation, which is not using the Debian installer, is started. Uh, the server reboots and then the first uh, boot scripts are hooked and then Puppet runs. Instead of explaining to you for hours how it works, I decided it was better to just show you. So let's start with a bare VM with this type of command and let's install OCI. So uh, all of OCI is available through X repo including all of the packages, including uh, the ones for Puppet. So here's an example on how to install it using um, OpenStack Usury. Xrepo is a bit like PPA, except that it's not about Ubuntu, it's about third-party repositories for Debian. So what does this package repository contain? It contains an OpenStack release, there is one Debian repository per release, it contains exclusively packages which are at least available in Debian Unstable, most of the time available from testing, and they are backported to the current Debian Stable. Uh, everything can be rebuilt from source using these repositories, so you can tweak absolutely everything if you wish to. It's self-contained, and you don't need any other artifact to install OpenStack using OCI. Um, everything is packaged, including all the Puppet OpenStack packages from upstream. Let's install OCI on that new VM. So it's as simple as app get install, OpenStack cluster installer, answering a few depth questions, and you're done. As you may see, it's not optimal video with Impress, but that should be all right. You'll be able to see still. Just wait for the DB to populate. And that's it. So what's in there? I haven't showed you uh, the dependencies, they were pre-installed because otherwise it takes too much time to display. Though in OCI you have dependencies for Apache plus PHP, MySQL, Puppet Master, TFT PHPA, 73 Puppet packages, out of which 30 are Puppet OpenStack, uh, some PHP, Puppet and shell scripts from OCI itself. OCI uses Puppet OpenStack upstream as a base, and then it adds a pair of classes and some dynamic PHP MySQL driven ENC. OCI can deploy many OpenStack services in a fully available fashion using SSL, including SSL re-encryption within the cluster itself. Everything is script scriptable and uses a REST API to uh, send the commands to OCI. Configuration of OCI is made through a simple configuration file, an ini file. There's a few important bits to address there, like the Debian repository addresses, uh, which are your trusted networks that may uh, re do hardware re uh, reporting, uh, and a few things that you may want to enable depending of, of your hardware, like uh, Rack ADM or Megacli if you have this type of hardware. Before you start deploying, you need to start the script from OCI that is going to generate its own CA so that you can do such re-encryption. Then the Debian Live image must be generated. It's done through a simple a single command, OpenStack Cluster Installer Build Live Image. 
it uses internally Debian Live Build, uh, which is a very powerful tool. It, it's possible to customize the images, um, like uh, in ETC, OpenStack Cluster Installer Live Image Editions. You can drop any files there and they're going to appear on your image. That's very convenient if you want to diagnose problems like hardware issues, if you want to do firmware upgrades and so on. It's also needed to configure a DHCP server to serve the type of subnet ranges that you wish to use. And now we are ready to PXE boot the servers. Yay! Hey. So let's see. The server boots over PXE, that's its Linux. It fetches the RAM disk and the kernel from HTTP, then boots on it. Then the server is going to fetch an IP address from the HTTP server and then fetches the SquashFS images over HTTP. That's the progress bar that you just saw here. And then once it's there, it's going to do the hardware discovery and images are going to, like, hardware server nodes are going to pop up on the OCI interface. The hardware discovery script will report a bunch of things like the chassis serial numbers, NIC speeds, BIOS and IPMI firmware versions, product names, amount of RAM, block devices. Here's how it looks like from the OCI client side. So as you, what you're seeing is a bunch of VMs that I use on my development. They are just pop popping up one by one and the hardware discovery script is reporting to the central OCI server. As you may see, we can see that the machine with serial C4 has two hard drives while the first three have only one and so on. So just wait a little bit and more uh, servers will pop up. Once a hardware node is um, booted and reports to uh, OCI, then we can do OCI machine show and its serial number. And then we can see a bunch of things like um, the install status, the host name, uh, the hardware specs in a more detailed fashion than with OCI CLI machine show. Um, the IPMI, IPMI configuration, networking, and role specific values that we can tweak depending on what we want to do with the hardware node. Now that we have a bunch of hardware booted, Let's start building a first cluster. So we start with OCI CLI cluster create Z. Infomaniac.ch is the domain name. Then we create, then we say that we want an NTP server for it. Otherwise it just uses the Debian default. And then we create two Swift regions. Even if you're doing compute, you need to create Swift regions. Then we create the networks there. Before creating the networks, we use locations. Locations are using the regions just set up earlier. So we first create a zone one location and a public one, which is going to hold our uh, public IP for the API. Then we create a management network using uh, this IP address and the location we just created. No means not a public thing. So then we create a VM network. So the VM network is for uh, the VXLAN traffic between uh, nodes. So VM net, enter. Uh, this environment is using uh, VMs and I'm not using VLANs. Therefore, uh, every network is going to be bound to a specific network card of the VMs. So here's the final result once all the network have been created. On the bottom of the screen here, you can see that I'm creating an IPMI network. That IPMI network can match a range from the HTTP. And if one hardware node boots on that range, then it's going to be assigned an IP 
for IPMI using the range defined on the IPMI network. So if I go to the next page, then you see IPMI addresses being assigned to the new servers. So uh, the one where you can see detect IPMI address field means that they are already set. Uh, the ones where it's still zero, it didn't happen yet because it needs another run of the hardware discovery uh, script so that it can report. Now that IPMI is set up, let's add machines to the cluster. So I got 19 VM to play with. Let's add, add the first machine C1 as a controller to the cluster. Okay, then we are going of course to set up three of them. C1, C2, C3, and then suspense. Let's add safe monitor node. C4, C5, C6. Let's add network nodes now. So two of them will be enough. C7, C C8. So of course, on, when it's real hardware, you just type the real serial number of your server. Now we add three OSD nodes. CD. And some uh, cinder volume machines. Two of them. Finally, some compute nodes. So everything on OCI CLI has batch completion. D1, D2, D3, and let's see. Now we have all of our servers with the hostname pre-calculated, IP addresses already assigned. The next step is either to do OCAI CLI machine install OS and then either the hostname of or the serial number of the machine or simply OCI CLI cluster install Z. Then it's going to go through each machine one by one on the correct order, installing first the OS, then waiting for Puppet to run to go to the next role. So everything is scheduled in a nice order so that it's well enough optimized, but still giving a schedule. So this is nice already, but that's still not enough. When you have many machines, you may wish to go further in uh, automation. So manual setup is too much work. It's prone to error. It takes too much of your administrator time. It's very repetitive and boring. So let's go the extra mile and do a hands-free setup. First thing is you need to describe how is your physical network. So uh, over here, you can tell file indicating switch names, where they are in which data center, which row, which rack, what's the name of the location that we've set up already with OCI CLI location create. And we also can set up a compute aggregate for that rack. On top, you see product names with how many use every hardware is taking. Then we have hardware profiles. So you can define as many hardware profile as you like. It, a hardware profile is not bounded to a role, meaning that you can have multiple hardware profiles for a single role. What happens is um, OCI is filtering hardware uh, with what you are writing here. So you have product name in here. I wrote only a single one, but you can write many to match many type of product names. So PowerEdge R640 is from Dell. You can add HP or Lenovo, Gigabyte, any type. You just define how, how much memory and hard, hard drive. And when you do that, you can enable uh, the setup of 